On today's episode, we want to talk about group coaching versus individual coaching. Now, we have this debate a lot, um, and I think there are pros and cons to both sides of the story. Group coaching is very good, individual, individual coaching is also very good. But it's trying to understand why would you want to do more, or why are more coaches pursue more of the individual lessons, prefer to do that, against the, the group sessions? What, what would be your take on it? Jack, what do you think? Well, I think initially, when, when, when I first certainly got into the industry as an assistant, you know, you want to fill your diary with 40 hours a week of um, private lessons, you know, or I can see a £40 an hour or a £50 an hour, whatever your hourly rate is. You think, if I can get X amount of people into that, I can earn that. But I think for the way that our careers have panned out, it, it, it would be great to get to that stage, but I think... One, it's a little bit unrealistic at times until you've really, really built yourself and promoted yourself, which can take a long time. And two, if you actually look at the financial value of, of coaching a group, I think it far outweighs your your individual package. So say, for example, you were, not we are, £50 an hour for a private lesson. Yes, that looks great in that essence for one hour, but we know as, as a group, we can teach 10 or 12 children for a fraction of that price that it costs them individually, and all of a sudden, if you've got 10 students paying, you know, say 10 pounds for that hour, for that group session, that's 100 pounds. You've all, just looking at that, you've doubled, you've doubled your money. Yes, you're spending less quality time with an individual, mm-hmm. and they're not getting that one-to-one interaction, but I think group coaching, it makes it cheaper for someone to come in, first of all. They're, looking at potentially making a few friends, people in the same scenario as them that they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna uh, not learn from, but they're gonna, they're gonna meet, they're potentially gonna be able to, to practice with, to play with going forwards. And I think as a coach, looking at group coaching does give you far more options in terms of a, a revenue stream. Or it's blending the two, isn't it? Groups and then divulge into individual stuff. What, I mean, what are your, what would you say, well, one, what do you prefer doing? And two, what would you say would be more beneficial for a coach looking to kind of do what we do junior-wise and adult-wise? Well, I think, again, I think there's pros and cons for both. I think as you as you touched on it, I think me personally, I think from a, from a financial point, as you say, is groups are more beneficial. I think by the time you net, net down your £50 an hour for your individual lesson, you walk away with less of a figure potentially by the time you pay for your range balls or your golf balls, you pay a, a commission to the head pro or the facility um, to be there. So then that, that £50 does become a, you know, a, a proportion less, doesn't it? So that hour already has a certain value to you. Um, I think that what someone gets out of that individual lesson is going to be more niche to them, more video analysis, more of a plan of action of what they want to do. But the argument is, I think, on that is how long you retain that person for as well. If, if they come there with the, the goal of they've got a golf trip coming up with work, you might only have them for five to ten lessons. They go on their golf trip, they're quite happy with it. You might not see them for a little while. Now, I appreciate some people come along and they're committed and they come weekly, fortnightly and, and do that. But to fill your diary in that way is, is, is difficult and does take time. Whereas I think a group, a group environment it's there's more of a cycle isn't there you know if you build the right platform okay you might lose some you'll gain some you'll go in but the what they get out of that session of course is much less um in terms of what they receive out of it but again if you teach it in the right way they are still learning they're still developing and from a junior perspective they're making friends now there is that competition whereas doing it on your own can be quite hard at times isn't it you know but for me personally i quite like the balance i quite like doing Groups. I quite like doing the individuals, it keeps me on my toes, it, it changes it up all the time. I think if you were doing individuals all the time or groups all the time, it might get a little bit repetitive. I quite like the mixture of the, the two, being honest. Um, you've got to have a blend, haven't you? You've got to have a blend of, you know, we might do a school coaching group, then you've got groups at the club, you've got individual lessons. It, it's creating all of these different revenue streams instead of just solely focusing on my one-to-one individual lesson. Now, going into, into more junior-based, I think initially it's great to start in a group 
And for, for the first few years of your practice, it's fantastic to be in a group. And we'd advocate going into a group first over anything else. Mm -hmm. As Matt alluded to, you're going to meet potentially new friends, meet potential play people to play with. You're going to have the social interaction that you need as, as a junior growing up, not just the goal skills, but the personal skills as well. I don't agree to a point with regards to they're going to learn more in an individual lesson. They're just going to have someone spending more time with them. Yeah. So you still get the same info in a group session, but you might, you might spend five minutes with that individual in a group instead of half an hour with them. Mm -hmm. But I think a blend of the two is quite good. It, dep it also depends on how much they're going to practice. So you might have a junior that just really enjoys the group coach and likes the social aspect to it, is improving gradually. But if you want to rapidly accelerate someone's progression, you do move them into a blend of group, individual. That again is upselling to your to your customer base. So you're getting group income and individual income. Obviously, with groups as well, you can. The biggest positive for me is everyone's coming at the same time. So yes, they're coming with their friends, but if you've got ten to twelve children in that group. That's one hour. If you're teaching them individually, they all want hours. You've then got a fund, which is great. You will earn more money doing that as a, as a in the long not in the long term, but as a progressive plan. But you've got to find twelve hours in your diary then mm -hmm. against the one. So a blend. If you can get them to come to a group mm -hmm. and then do the individual lessons on top of that, I think you corner it a little bit, and it's easier that way to to do it. So I think. For us two personally, we would advocate, yes, do both. But if you're looking to grow a junior coaching business, I think you should centre your main 12 to 18 months on solely building groups. And then you have juniors, you get to a certain standard that need to move into a blend of the two. And then we know with, with, the, with some of the, the lower handicap of juniors we taught in the past, that they get to 13, 14, 15, they, 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 they don't need a group class as such. They get their social interaction by joining a club, going out on the golf course. Now they want a more bespoke individual package, but they've come through that program for X amount of time, and then they gradually, you know, they naturally flow into an individual, individual package. It's like you said, if you've got a junior, we teach juniors on an individual basis, youngsters as well, you know, seven, eight-year-olds, but Matt's quite right, you may well lose them at times. Whereas if they're in part of the group, they stay in the group, they want to come along and see their friends, and then you can move them over. It's a great, it's a good model what we advocate people trying to trying to do. Um, last thing on that, really, is if you had to tomorrow not give either a group lesson or an individual lesson again, what one are you not? What one can you live without? Individual. Well, yeah, I know it'll be the same. So as we said, going to grow a junior coaching business, start with groups and then branch out into, into the individual stuff. Yes, the hourly weight looks fantastic for, a, for an individual lesson and maybe fill your diary with, with individual lessons around your core groups when you're building your diary. Set your groups in stone and then fill and flood the rest of the gaps with your individuals and build your, build your business that way. So Matt, we've had the conversation about going from, you know, groups versus individuals, what, what the, the positives and negatives are with both. But let's look, you know, let's get down to the finances of it and try and break down a little bit more as to what, why it's more beneficial for a coach to maybe go down the group route instead of the individual route. What were your thoughts on that? So I think, as we touched upon it, it's... Your hourly rate, you look at it and you think, well, I could charge £50 an hour for that one session. By the time you take your commission off and your range balls and other bits that you have to pay, what is it you are actually left with? Now, some of you might get the whole, the whole fee. Brilliant if you do. Some of us might not. We have to pay that fee. So you have to look at what is that hour actually worth to me delivering, it, delivering that session. Then if you take that and you then put the group um, element into it and you look at, right, well, if I, if I do a group of 10 at £10 a head, which is more than feasible, that one hour, that same one hour is worth double what the other one was. So actually, that's worth £100 to me. Now again, I appreciate you have to take your commissions off and whatever, but if you look at the balance of those two 
those two hours that you're selling in a peak time on a day, at five till six or six till seven on a Saturday, the, you're almost earning double as a, goal, as a group than you are individual. Now there's obviously pros and cons to that. You know, you could have your individual that does it for so long, drops off, or same with the groups. How does the group work? If they're paying a, a set rate, 10 pound a week, and they don't show up, then would it become less? What would be your take on, on that side of it? I think if you, the way we run it, we have a kids club that runs on the Sundays, a group class, you know, and that's the only class we have in a week that is a roll up. So we could have five, we could have 15, 16. And, you know, you pay a, a so slightly reduced rate for that, for that privilege, and then, but when you move up to the development program, you are then tied into a a monthly fee, which means, as Matt's alluded to, if someone's away or ill, they're still paying for that time. So you're guaranteeing that time. Or if you get a no show for an individual lesson, yes, you might you might have a cancellation fee, but you're you're losing out. Well, we know on a, on a weekend in a group as part of the development program, if you if you don't turn up, you're, you're committed to turning up at that time. If something happens, you can't make it. You know, you can change to another group to make up a session, but that money is guaranteed. And it's also, the group coaching is guaranteed for me year round. You know, we, not to divulge too much into our finances, but we earn just about the same amount in a December month in terms of the group coaching as we would in August. Yes, we get more individual lessons then because the weather's better and people want to come down and Particularly adults want to work on their game, but I'd say the beauty of our model is in group coaching keeps us on a consistent revenue stream. We're individual coaching, yes, you get X amount, but it, it may bump up in the seasonal months of good seasons and it'll go down in the go down in the um, in the winter. I think if you look at it from a, a business model or a a personal finance model, it's you know you've got your overheads, you know you've got your bills to make. We certainly sat there at a time and was like, well, how do we, how many lessons have we got to give to reach that point? Whereas now we've actually built a model where we know, right, we flood the flood the groups, we get good numbers in groups, we then run other groups and flooded that and then set new ones up. So there's not too many in it. You cap it, they pay monthly. And as Jack rightly said, you then can forecast or you know through the groups by doing X sessions, this is what your revenue is every month. So that covers your your bills, you know, that's the target you're working towards. And we actually look at individual lessons as more as a, a top up on that, as opposed to our actual thing that we do. Yeah, so we look at that and go, right, if we can fill X amount of groups, which again, as we said earlier, that hour session doing a group could be worth two one hour private lessons just for doing that one. You've saved an extra hour, but you've covered the finance of that. So if you can look at building a model as we've done, that generates X amount a month by doing X amount of classes, you can actually then get to that figure much faster. It's much more repeatable. If someone doesn't want to come, yes, they, they, they drop. You ask for one month's notice, they drop out. And because of the program and the model that we have, there's always someone ready to step in and to refill that, that slot. So your, your monthly income is, you know, give or take a little bit, but it's pretty consistent yep. all year round. And as Jack said, in the summer, you might then give a few more one-to-one -one lessons in and around those in your diary because you have the time to. And that's your extra little bit that can go in a different kitty for whatever you want to do, a holiday or an extension on your house, whatever that might look like to you personally. Don't do an extension on your house <laughs> from personal experience.